This conference will now be recorded. Okay, good evening everyone and uh, welcome to, sorry, and welcome to our uh, live webinar and uh, live webinar on career opportunities in arts and humanities. Uh, it's uh, nine o'clock and uh, I guess uh, we will get going uh, so that you know, we, will, uh, we are in a position to finish it on time. So, uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is, let me just outline, uh, I will give you the outline. Uh, I'll be speaking uh, for approximately 35 to 40 minutes, uh, and uh, I will have a structured presentation. And after 45 minutes or so, I'll be um, opening uh, uh, the session for all of you. So in case if you have any queries or any questions, we can we can discuss around arts and humanities. So please uh, uh, restrict your question for the day only towards arts and humanities because we are going to have uh, different uh, and very specific focus webinars uh, for each of uh, the stream that is commerce, science, engineering, etc. Um, so we'll we'll uh, kind of uh, uh, do that uh, uh, when a particular webinar is 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 is, is delivered. Okay, so uh, just to have a, a proper effectiveness of the webinar, I am going to close my camera for the time being because of the bandwidth issue, so that you all get a smooth webinar. And at the end, then I will open camera as well. Okay. So uh, let me close the camera and let us begin. Yeah. So uh, once again, uh, welcome to this webinar. And uh, I take this opportunity to thank you all for your support and uh, trust. Uh, I think we have the, the, the feedback which I'm getting from uh, many of you is that uh, the podcasts are going well? But I thought since the examinations, I mean, since now the there's a there's a particular time wherein a lot of students are going to take a career decision. I thought let us have a very focused conversation around uh, each of the stream. Okay, so today uh, we are going to talk uh, on uh, as to why humanities. Okay, and why we should study uh, the humanities. Uh, what are the various career options or opportunities? Uh, this space offer us. Uh, though in the past we had uh, one podcast dedicated to the art and humanities, and I hope uh, you all have gone through that. Uh, if not, then uh, as you all know that these podcasts are uh, now available with uh, many uh, with many uh, podcast platforms like Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, etc. Okay. So, uh, so today I was checking and uh, just to tell you all that we have so far published or delivered 12 podcasts on arts and humanity, uh, humanities. Okay, and uh, in this webinar, we are uh, going to look at uh, this particular option in detail. Mm, and uh, so new podcast on arts and humanities will also continue so that you, know, you get a very, very clear cut idea about each and every uh, focused occupation. Um, so therefore, today my intentions are to talk much on the why part as to why we need to study humanities, right? Uh, because uh, there are a number of myths associated with humanities um, and uh, I would like to debunk uh, those uh, myths uh, today. Uh, so let me start today's session by sharing an anecdote, okay? So uh, this uh, instance happened some four or five years ago. Uh, a girl student who scored very uh, good marks um, 
I, I, I guess uh, she was uh, about 94% or plus, uh, had approached us for a, for a counseling. Uh, so uh, just uh, for the simplicity, let us call her, let us give her a name and let us give her a name as Gita. So Gita, along with her parents, uh, they visited our office uh, and they were uh, looking very confused, uh, looking very worried. And she told me that uh, she scored 94% plus marks in her 10th grade. And uh, she always wanted to pursue psychology. And uh, she even got an admission at uh, St. Xavier's in Mumbai. So let me tell you that Xavier's in Mumbai is one of the best or uh, premier college uh, as far as the psychology and other streams are concerned. And so obviously I congratulated her uh, for getting a good grade and getting admission in the Dream Institute. But she looked worried and I and told me that uh, she and her parents are now confused uh, about the career choice they made. So even I was slightly puzzled uh, because uh, she wanted to pursue psychology and she got into one of the best college. Rather than being happy, she was she was worried. So on inquiring further, uh, she told me that many people, that is close relatives, mama, chacha, aunties, neighbor, friends, or as we say Mumbai ki bhasha mein bolte hai, milkman se leke liftman tak. Everyone was kind of telling her that, you know, why she chose arts despite 94% plus marks. As she should have chosen science. Matlab, ये तुमने क्या कर दिया मतलब इतने अच्छे मार्क्स है तो आपने साइंस ही लेना चाहिए था सो टू कट अ स्टोरी शॉर्ट अपन आई मीन आफ्टर आवर सेशन सी कंटिन्यूड इन द सेम कॉलेज विद द सेम कोर्स दैट इज ह्यूमैनिटीज सो द पॉइंट हियर इज दैट मेनी ऑफ अस आर हैविंग वेरी लिमिटेड व्यूज अबाउट करियर एंड दे फील दैट इफ यू गेट अ गुड मार्क्स गुड ग्रेड यू मस्ट चूज साइंस इफ नॉट साइंस आई मीन इफ देयर आर लिटिल less marks than commerce and then arts and humanities okay and uh, and therefore i would like to now debunk uh, some of these myths okay uh, because they don't hold true okay so let me let me tell you about uh, that uh, the first myth that you can you only opt for it when you are a you are you are having a low grade okay or less mark then only you can pursue uh, humanities okay uh, so um, so this is totally false otherwise student will not go to college where the cutoffs are 97% and all okay so uh, Xavier is, is having a cutoff which is like which goes as high as 97% right and even if you look at uh, the best colleges uh, across the country their 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 cutoffs uh, are in the similar range okay so uh, so this myth uh, don't uh, hold true uh, so the second session second myth is that that there is not uh, much career scope uh, okay as far as uh, the humanities are concerned and uh, let me tell you that by the end of this webinar, you would uh, understand that there is a huge scope for uh, humanities career. And soon you will you will know that uh, even humanity uh, humanities graduates are hired by big technologies firms. Okay, you can even pursue psychology uh, in, uh, in 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 IITs. Okay, so it's not that you know you cannot create a serious career uh, out of humanities. You you. You, you you do that okay uh it is, the third myth could be that you know that humanities is all about literature and psychology okay so let me tell you that uh, humanities is is much beyond these only these two two streams um i mean for example economics uh, even the entire design domain communication domain performing art visual art liberal liberal art all these domains offer equally strong career options. So just to give you an example uh, about economics. Uh, so we all know the stock market and uh, we all uh, are very or rather, you know, we always uh, pursue 
uh, equity market, when there is up and down in equity market, we all feel, you know, I mean, um, we go with those, 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 those highs and lows of stock market and today the market crash and, you know, 50,000 crores got wiped out and blah, blah, blah. But let me tell you that entire stock market per se, uh, there are two components. One is equity component and one is uh, debt component. So debt components component hold almost 80% of the market. So equity percent equity equity component is only just 20%. So yeah, 20% mein itna bol bala hai. But 80% is a very, very silent market. It's a debt market, okay, which is driven by economists. Okay. Right. And so you can imagine that uh, if you're an economic graduate, so you have a huge op career opportunities in the financial sector, in the in the in the stock market and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, fourth is that you know my humanity topics are very theoretical. Okay, but actually they are not true. I mean, this, 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 all these subjects. If you have a keen uh, interest or if you have a skills and abilities, okay, to pursue these courses, then they offer a great deal of reading, writing, and you know, communicating, right? So um, they, uh, it's not that you know, and they are very, very interesting, right? Okay, so. Let us move further, right? So, okay. So uh, this is what I was talking about. That do you know that what Google, Apple, Facebook are hiring for? Okay, and let me tell you that sixty-five percent of their total open opportunities are 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 are, are non-technical. Okay. So 65% of their total workforce is non-technical, right? Because we are under impression that, you know, since Google, Apple, Facebook, okay, they are hiring, they are, uh, uh, they are not hiring only technical people, but they are also hiring people from humanities, okay? And uh, so they need marketers, they need designer, they need project manager, they need program manager, Okay, they need lawyer, they need HR specialists, they need trainers, coaches, sell, sellers, okay, people in the marketing department, buyers, okay, on so on and on, right? And hence, so uh, this is not true that you know, technology companies will only hire technical people. And uh, uh, let me share uh, uh, one thing that uh, my daughter is, do is pursuing her psychology, and uh, once she told me that. One of her course mate is an engineer. He's a he's a he's a engineering graduate, and he's also pursuing psychology in uh, with with Amity University. Okay, so I because uh, he's very keen to join Google, and Google is looking at people who have a multidisciplinary uh, approach or a multidisciplinary mindset. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so this is a very very uh, famous quote by. Uh, Steve Jobs, okay, and uh, in his biography or uh, in his many interviews, he has explained that how calligraphy classes have helped him or has has inspired him to include wide range of fonts, okay, right? And he says that um, it is in our Apple DNA that you know technology alone is not enough, okay, right? And uh, hence he said, you know, you need to couple technology and uh, and, and 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 humanities together. Okay, uh, you all must have also heard about uh, design thinking these days because that's a that's a very buzzword in the in the in the contemporary world. Okay, there are a lot of uh, organizations are talking about design thinking. There are a lot of organizations who are training people on designing thinking. Okay. So today worldwide, okay, designing thinking is a is a buzzword because this particular approach, okay, this particular model, okay, is primarily used to design um, products, design services, and uh, solve problems. Okay, so design thinking is being being used in in in, in which they integrate human needs with technology. Okay. And uh, if you see in this process, uh, the, the empathy 
is a, is a very very important element and empathy comes from uh, humanities okay uh now next uh, again uh, many of you have must have uh, heard about the stem that is uh, science technology uh, engineering and maths okay uh, however today stem is being replaced with stem but the spelling has a slight change and they have added a in it so now the current stem is s t e a m and that additional a is basically talking about arts okay it is talking about humanity humanities okay because humanity gives us the con the context of our world they teach us how to think critically uh and uh, if you see the art approach is, is is purposely unstructured while the science are purposely structured approach and they teach us to and hence they teach us to pursue they i mean you know uh, pursue it as they give us the language which we use to convert our emotion to thoughts and action okay and therefore stem might be necessary for technological progress but without arts it is impossible for students to reach their full potential the a that a represent liberal arts language arts social studies physical art fine art and music so stem education is about applying creativity and critical thinking to stem project that is maybe engineering project or a mathematical projects igniting students imagination and creating uh, creativity through the arts so studying art subjects contribute to the development of essential skills like collaboration communication problem solving and critical thinking it also enhances students flexibility adaptability productivity responsibility and innovation right and hence today worldwide stem is changing its approach and they have rather started adding a that is the art element or a humanities element into it okay uh, i would uh, like to take you okay so okay so uh, then again so why why uh, the humanities okay so humanities uh, like you know they connect uh, us together they make us better human okay because we understand culture okay we take references from the past right but in today's context it is very very important because humanities gives us the workplace skill they gives us life skills and they gives us global perspective okay so when we are talking about workplace skills today if you go and talk to any of the employers you would know that you know what is that they are looking from their future work workforce or the current workforce and they would tell you that they are looking at people with critical thinking or analytical thinking abilities problem solving abilities creativity innovation collaboration interpersonal skill communication research skill leadership and all that because see today the disruptive technologies are are creating a, a a paradigm shift in the in the way we are doing business or living life okay this respective tech i mean these disruptive technologies are are, are changing um, i mean whole lot of things around us okay and they are pushing us into the unknowns right we really don't know what kind of uh, future problems we are going to face okay or the current problems like uh, maybe uh, uh, your climate change starvation inequality etc so how do you solve okay so in, in order to solve this future or uh, these critical challenges or we can say a 21st century uh challenges we also need to have a 21st century skill sets okay and these skill sets are nothing but the critical thinking creativity innovation communication collaboration emotional intelligence etc okay and uh, because uh, we really don't know what kind of uh, changes we will go through and you know hence we need to have optimism 
and we need to have a hopefulness and that that is that is uh, taught to us by emotional intelligence then etiquette mannerism etc okay and as far as the global perspective is concerned we need to solve global challenges as i as i explained okay and it is very very important that you know that we we need to have that humanities or the um, kind of education to uh, to go forward uh, and uh, this is again um, one of the statistics which say that about 60% of American CEOs are bachelor in humanities. Okay, right. So, what do we study under humanities? Okay, so let us look at uh, uh, that aspect that you know what all subjects okay we uh, are, are covered under uh, humanities, right? So um, the, the subjects include uh, the modern languages, literature, philosophy, psychology, history, human geography, law, politics, religion, performing arts, visual arts, international relations, economics, archaeology, social sciences or anthropology, and sociology. Right. So uh, now let us look at uh, the uh, various uh, um, career clusters, okay, uh, wherein these uh, uh, these uh, these occupations um, belong to, okay. So for example, uh, if you look at uh, human services, okay, human services, then under human services uh, we have. Uh, we have uh, clinical psychology, uh, we have mentoring and coaching, sociology, counseling psychology, home sciences, geography, anthropology, uh, and uh, archaeology. Okay, these all subjects comes under human services. Okay, uh, as we know that you know counseling is, I mean, especially the psychology is is going to gain a lot of momentum because we had a special uh, podcast on psychology in which I had mentioned that, you know, how things are changing, how new branches in psychologies are emerging, especially sports psychology in, 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 in the coming time is going to gain a lot of momentum, forensic psychology, right? Cognitive science, right? Okay. So the uh, second uh, uh, cluster is education and training. And under education, then you know you can get into technical training, or you can get into teaching. You can uh, get into corporate trainer. You can get into even school teaching or library or education administration. Under media and communication cluster, we have mass communication and journalism, editor, copywriter, public relations and corporate communication. Uh, politics and international relations. Okay, we had uh, uh, one podcast on international relationship, and you 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 understand that you know how important uh, uh, the international relations and the kind of job opportunities uh, it offers. Okay, even in corporate communication, corporate communication is again a very very niche branch which offers excellent uh, uh, corporate career uh, uh, to you. Okay, so under hospitality and tourism uh, uh, career cluster, we have a wedding planner, event, entertainment, and hospitality, air hostesses, travel and tourism, hotel management, culinary arts, etc. Now, wedding planner, okay, uh, is is very very upcoming uh, profession. Uh, people are spending a lot on weddings, and you know there are some weddings, you know. In, in, in which people are spending crores and crores of rupees and they need all their uh, weddings to be planned very meticulously and hence the whole new generation of wedding planners is emerging and it's a as an as a business it, it it offers terrific opportunity yeah then uh, under public safety and security uh, career cluster we have law law enforcement services okay uh, that comes like you know police officers, IPS officers, raw officers, CID, etc. And it also like you know gets into emergency services and disaster management, in which we can I mean we can join firefighter, I mean uh, join uh, fire safety, uh, then uh, emergency specialist, disaster management, and also you can uh, join the armed forces. Okay. 
uh, under arts and language arts then we have again huge opportunity uh, like you know multimedia animation gaming and vfx again very very emerging field product designing again very very emerging field web designing user experience uh, okay is again a whole new world okay as to as a consumer how you would like to gain an experience about any services like you know even if you are visiting website if that website is not very uh, is, is fail to give user experience then you may not stay uh, on that website for a long time sound engineering design creative writer performing ads okay uh, then interior designing fashion designing interpret translate accessory design liberal arts graphical designing fine arts etc right so these are the and under legal services then you have company secretary uh, then um, advocates i mean lawyers corporate lawyer legal advisors etc okay so now um, looking at the industries uh, you work uh, with the humanities uh, uh, humanity degrees are again a plenty of opportunity uh, you have journalism publishing advertising international relations teaching technology companies design all domain administrative services writers hospitality and event management companies tourism government jobs ngos hospital and mental health centers counseling centers community projects human resources digital marketing music and drama film and media production public relations and law and public safety right so these are the industries uh, now uh, i also would like to uh, kind of tell you about the upcoming careers in humanities okay so these were the careers which uh, are very much part of uh, i mean the, the careers which i mentioned were very much part of the humanities but now there are new streams which are coming up in the in the humanities space and uh, so one of the uh, one of the uh, the area is uh, gerontology right gerontology is uh, is basically is a study of aging process and uh, finding finding solutions associated with it like uh, i mean because aging population face problems like you know physical uh, deteriorations mental challenge mental health emotional and social uh, challenges okay and uh, so you can get in i mean you have now uh, uh, undergraduate i mean uh, masters and 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 diplomas uh, are, are are available under uh, gerontology right and as an undergraduate level you need to be uh, having a background of psychology public health administration social work home sciences etc and then you can uh, get into gerontology now uh, tis that is tata institute of social sciences is is offering diploma in gerontology okay uh the institute of home economics in delhi they also offer post graduation diploma in health and social gerontology national institute of social defense that is nisd uh, delhi offers pg diploma in health and social gerontology and kolkata metropolitan institute of gerontology kolkata they are offering one year pg diploma course in gerontology and age management okay and um, let me tell you that uh, now uh, aging population is is becoming a, a major cause of concern countries like japan germany are already facing uh, a, a big challenge uh, as far as their aging population is concerned and i think uh, as a country uh, even in india we are also going to have a lot of uh, aging population in in time to come and hence uh, gerontology uh, will offer very good career for the people who would like to work in this particular space so obviously uh, the the job opportunities uh, which are available for you are into healthcare sector uh, even in teaching research because this this area need to be researched very well nursing homes hospitals okay uh, even counseling okay the emotional counseling and other type of counseling are also going to be um, in demand um, as we move forward okay Uh, then uh, rural studies and development again uh, uh, 
uh, the, this particular um, uh, space uh, is basically concentrating or focusing on rural development and management, uh, village development, uh, issues faced by underprivileged uh, people. So uh, in, in this, uh, you primarily work with the various government-aided uh, rural institutions or NGOs or government agencies. Okay, and uh, some of these institutes, that is, instead of rural management, uh, Anand, there's Irma, uh, they have a course in PG, PG, PGP course and uh, rural management, then Gandhinagar Rural Institute Gujarat also offers MA in rural development, Mahatma Gandhi Department of Rural Studies also offer master of masters in rural studies, Lok Bharati Lok Seva Mahavidyalaya, they also offers master of uh, rural studies, okay. Again, in this particular space, uh, the job opportunities are rural cooperative sector, agribusiness enterprises, non-governmental organizations, CSR bodies, etc. Right? And uh, now this is again very, very important area which is uh, coming up, uh, which is called as habitat policy and practice. Habitat policy and practice. Again, uh, if you have a background uh, that is under graduation, if you have a degree in engineering, architecture, management, geography, planning, law, or social sciences, uh, then yes, you have a good opportunity because this is very, very emerging career space. Uh, currently, Tata, because you know, uh, they basically study uh, the livelihood activities, uh, housing infrastructure, and social composition of urban societies. Um, basically, they work on challenges of urban realities. It is uh, it is involved in creating and maintaining safe urban environment. Okay, that is a whole new subject. Okay, and so currently, uh, Tata Institute of Social Sciences, they are offering a master's program that is MA or MSc in Habitat Policy and Practice. So in case if you have a science background, maybe engineering, architecture, etc., then you can join MSc course. Otherwise, if you have a background of social sciences etc then you have a option of ma additionally even terry university offers a related course that is post graduation in environment and sustainable studies right and uh, as far as your job opportunities is concerned uh, then uh, okay government uh, agencies uh, then transport and infrastructure companies water and maintenance and other areas related to governance and administration yeah then uh, there's again one more area which is like gender and women studies so i need not to really explain you what it is but this is to do with the uh, inequality giving gender rights to people okay and uh, you can pursue this uh, particular course uh, if you have a uh, background of political science history psychology social work and uh, sociology right so uh, these, are, these are the various institutes which are offering uh, master's uh, courses. That is Ambedkar University, Raju Gandhi National Institute of Youth Development, uh, Tasra, Tata Institute of Social Sciences at Hyderabad, Hyderabad campus, okay, Aligarh Muslim University, uh, and all that. Uh, only Indian Institute of Psychology and Research Bangalore, they offer BA in Psychology, Journalism, and Gender Studies. And um, again, so as far as your job opportunities are concerned, the job opportunities available are with NGO, healthcare organization, international organization like uh, WHO, educational institutes, and various fields of counseling. Counseling, okay. You also you can also work in the media and communication as a writer, editor. Uh, you can create special documentaries and stuff like that. Okay, then uh, we come to the liberal arts. Uh, yeah, we had one special episode on liberal arts. Uh, uh, so uh, liberal art is, is, is basically the 21st century education. It's a 20th century education approach. Okay, and it is primarily um, the education which creates mind for 21st century challenges. Okay, because you have a very multidisciplinary approach you have a combination of science subjects and humanities subjects and business subjects and all that. So 
you know they create whole lot of multidisciplinary minds which uh, are going to be hired by uh, multi giants mega giants uh, consulting companies and um, large multinationals okay and that process has already begun okay there are excellent uh, curriculums which are available in liberal art okay now um, now government has proposed public universities uh, for the liberal art education which are going to be at par with iits and iims and uh, we would like to come at par with uh, the the ivy leagues of the world uh, okay so in the united states like you know there are ivy league universities which are the like top class universities like harvard mit stanford ucla etc so we would like to also create such kind of universities for uh, i mean university options for our indian uh, uh, students and uh, very recently government has proposed uh, their draft to create a multidisciplinary education and research universities called as meru okay and very soon we will have uh, such kind of universities uh, hitting the market and creating um, a great uh, liberal art uh, Uh, curriculum uh, options uh, for indian students okay uh, government also has a plan to uh, have liberal education for the iits okay and there's a there's a lot uh, there, and and there's uh, there, there, there's a, there's a proposed draft uh, there as well so okay some of the liberal art colleges okay um, uh, now uh, we have very limited choice as of now but as we go forward i'm sure we will have a great option in liberal and meru is going to be the great uh, you know option so currently we have all private universities so ashoka university uh, which is in north again considered as one of the best university uh, for liberal arts education jindal Jind school of liberal arts uh, both these universities are at uh, i think in haryana sonipat flame university which is uh, near pune uh, kriya university now this is again a very very new age university uh, promoted by industry leaders and let me tell you that raghuram rajan the ex governor rbi is on the advisory board of kriya university again very good um, uh, option symbiosis school of liberal arts azim premji university school of liberal arts at pdpu that is pandit dinayal petroleum university uh, nmms in mumbai okay so these uh, these colleges these universities are offering uh, uh, okay three year to four year uh, course uh, um, either in called as a ba in ba in liberal arts or bsc in liberal arts so in case you have a science options so then that degree will be considered as a bsc in liberal arts okay um okay so these are uh, these are some of the top colleges for uh, humanities education and uh, the list goes like this that lady sri ram college of women in delhi loyola college in chennai st stephen's college in delhi st javier's college in mumbai st javier's college in kolkata presidency college kolkata ferguson college in pune Christ College in Bangalore, Stella Maris College in Chennai, and Miranda House in Delhi. So, okay, so these are I mean just I mean, I've just mentioned ten colleges, but there are a few more colleges which are good for uh, humanities. Uh, okay, so uh, internationally, the, these are the universities which offer excellent humanities education, which includes uh, Stanford University, University of Cambridge, University of Oxford. uh massachusetts institute of technology harvard university university college london that is ucl in london princeton university university of chicago uh, yale university and university of edinburgh okay uh some of the uh, uh these are the institutes which are offering masters program that is jnu also offers excellent uh, master program uh, in humanities then tata institute of social sciences nalanda university st stephen's college delhi miranda house presidency college kolkata christ university is in bangalore okay uh, so far uh, we have uh, delivered podcast uh, on arts and humanities and there are about uh, 12 podcasts so far 
I think uh, we had we started with humanities and arts, and then we had economics, performing art, NID that is uh, um, uh, this is a design. I mean, you know, NID National Institute of Design. Okay, we had covered uh, one episode on that. Then archaeology, we had covered. We had uh, hotel management. We had uh, psychology and uh, their branch its branches. We had a uh, one episode on liberal art. We also had an episode on international relationship. We also had an uh, episode on literature, music, and law. And we hope to have a few more uh, episodes on humanities and uh, uh, and then arts arts uh, faculty. Uh, so that's all uh, from my side uh, for the day. Uh, as I said that, you know, I'm going to finish uh, in next 45 minutes and I think I'm about to finish uh, my time. So thank you very much. In case you have any queries, you can uh, call me on this particular number. You can also write to me, send an email on vijay at rm dot, uh, dot com. Our podcasts are available on Spotify, anchor.com, Apple podcast, Google podcast under tagline of 21st century careers. Okay. So uh, great. So what I'll do is uh, now I'm going to uh, open the uh, discussion. Uh, okay, in case you have any, or uh, so let me just unmute you all. So if you're traveling, uh, please uh, mute. Any question you can find. Yeah, so you also have an option to unmute uh, in case you have uh, muted your. So you'll have to uh, kind of unmute and uh, then talk. Uh, good, evening. good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, my question is, what are the different disciplines related to gerontology? Uh, they're related to? Gerontology. Gerontology. Yes. So gerontology, uh, see, gerontology is is, is primarily uh, study of uh, you know, studying the aging, okay, and making that entire process uh, bearable for the aging population. So the branches is one is yes, uh, psychology, okay, as well as uh, even if you have a, a background of nursing, okay, you have a background of uh, maybe uh, medicine, you can you can work in gerontology. So, uh, do we need to have a, a science degree? Uh, uh, so, it all depends. Man. I mean, you know, suppose, for example, you have a psychology degree. Okay. So, then you can get uh, the diploma, post-graduation diploma in gerontology and maybe work on that particular domain. And in case you have, a, say, science background, say, uh, say nursing background or a, or a medical background, then you yes. will work in that particular space because see aging population is going to have a lot of health challenges as well as social i mean uh, social and emotional challenges so psychologists will take care of their social and emotional challenges and maybe you can take all the biological challenges yeah if you have a science background yeah thank you so much sir. yeah you're welcome Good evening, sir. I have a question yes. regarding industrial psychology. Anji. Uh, is it too early to decide which branch of psychology should a child pursue? Because uh, looking at clinical psychology, she feels that it's a challenge for her. But industrial mm -hmm. psychology uh, feels to her more. So I want okay. to understand what the skill sets for industrial psychology. Ah, so uh, primarily, see, industrial psychology. Uh, I mean, eventually you can get into the HR or IR. Okay, 
right? Okay. Uh, so in order to have, uh, uh, I mean, the, the skill set, if you have to talk about, then obviously you have to have a kind of business human, okay, along with all your psychological traits. Because since you are going to deal uh, in the business environment, you need to know how businesses run, okay, what are the critical competencies a business would need, Okay, then obviously you need to look at organizational uh, behavior, the OB side of it. Okay, then L and D, that is learning and development side of it. Okay, and accordingly you can you can nurture or develop your competencies. Yeah, a good communication, a good uh, competency. Okay, because you have to deal with a lot of uh, uh, employees. Uh, you have to counsel them. Uh, I mean, you know, all all, all sort of. Uh, Okay. I hope uh, I answered your question. Yes, sir. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, my son is pursuing uh, uh, B.Tech in uh, Electronics and Communication Engineering in second year. And uh -huh. uh, as of now, he's very clear that he doesn't want to pursue uh, engineering field in future. OK. And uh, as I went through the podcast you were giving us, you know, bi-weekly and today also I could see the liberal arts quite uh, interesting and I could, I could, you know, gauge that it might have, my son might have an interest in this kind of a, a career in future. Mm -hmm. So, uh, will it be right for him to give a you know uh, what do you call it an exposure in liberal arts even after doing an engineering degree oh yes yes so as i was uh, as i had mentioned that uh, one engineering graduate is pursuing psychology correct okay? and as we are saying that you know day by day as we are moving into more complex world uh, we need a you know, multidisciplinary approach. So obviously, the liberal art will give him that multidisciplinary approach. Uh, currently, Ashoka University offers masters in liberal art. As far as my knowledge is concerned, this is the only institute which offers master program in liberal art. Rest, all these universities are offering bachelors uh, in 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 liberal art. So in case um, he's interested to look at uh, liberal art, then uh, I would uh, encourage you to go through the Ashoka University website, okay, uh, in which they had mentioned uh, the uh, about MA in liberal art. Maybe he can look at the curriculum and look at the admission process, uh, etc. And how good it is to pursue uh, masters in liberal arts in India compared to abroad? Uh, see, um, even if you look at uh, universities like Ashoka, Jindal, Flame, okay, uh, the entire faculty side of there is highly educated, studied in, studied abroad, okay. So they are the people. They are also like you know visiting faculties with uh, many world-renowned uh, institutes or universities, okay. So this is a great option, um, you know, we have, uh, so, and instead of like, you know, spending in dollars, okay, you can yeah. spend in, and get really good, equally good education in India. Yeah. Yeah, true, 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 yes. correct, correct. Yes. So we'll get Hello? back to you on personally on this note uh, in a different sure. way. Thank sure. you so okay. much. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, uh, hello. Good evening. Yes. Good evening. Uh, I want yeah, I, my question is also related to liberal arts. Uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to know what are the job opportunities uh, with liberal arts because there will be a mixture of, as you said, there'll be science as well as some humanity subjects. So what kind mm -hmm. of a job opportunity do we expect with liberal arts? Uh, so uh, currently, as I was telling you that, you know, most of these liberal art programs are at a graduation level. Okay. So depending on the institute, you can either choose one or two majors. Okay. Mm. Right. So, mm -hmm. for example, uh, you can you can choose say biology and psychology as two majors. Okay. So when okay. you graduate, uh -huh. when you graduate, you have to major. Okay. Then uh -huh. masters are concerned. Then maybe you can choose one as a discipline. But okay. in the whole 
what is happening is that you know you are creating a very multidisciplinary approach so your critical thinking is enhanced your research capabilities is enhanced your analytical capabilities are enhanced okay and okay. then you gain, go, go go in for a specialization so, so while you are going for a specialization you may choose biology or you may choose mm -hmm. psychology okay or maybe you okay. can like cognitive science so for example if you have a combination of biology and a psychology mm -hmm. maybe you can look at cognitive science okay, okay. and now cognitive like couple of our IITs are offering cognitive science in MS as a MSc program. Okay, okay. so you okay. can uh, go through the COGSET uh, entrance. Okay, and uh -huh. uh, you look at uh, you know getting into these universities. I mean these IITs. Okay, okay, and yeah. the opportunities, if job opportunities would be in the field that you do masters in. Oh, yeah. I mean, every company will uh, offer you uh, great career options because, as I uh, as I mentioned, that you know, organizations are now looking at uh, people uh, with multidisciplinary approach because they don't want okay. uh, you know uh, nerds today. <laughs> Literally. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi. Good evening, Vijay. This is Manish. Uh, related to this, uh, the liberal arts thing. Um, yeah. So, if we want to choose a, if 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 my uh, 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 son or daughter wants to choose a combination of biology and psychology, mm -hmm. uh, is this available in the um, uh, undergraduation itself, or is it just after or or during graduation you have to choose these subjects? So, for example, in CBSC. There is no mm -hmm. combination of biology and psychology that you can choose at at a uh, undergraduate level. Correct. So, so when do we choose these subjects? When does he choose so, or she choose? Yeah, at an undergraduate level itself, you choose these subjects. Okay. So, so you, so, so you mean to say tenth, eleventh, eleventh, and twelfth they choose this these subjects? No, not tenth. Undergraduate. I'm saying graduation time. Undergraduate. Oh, okay. After 12. okay. So, yeah. so what do they do? Uh, uh, what do they choose uh, when they are in eleventh and twelfth? So, eleven till eleven twelfth, we have no option because see, we have to go as per what our boards are prescribing. Okay. 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 So, if so, so is, is it is it PCB? She should be after if she wants to go ahead with um, you know biology and psychology at a later stage or what? Yeah, so in case if you would like to, as you rightly pointed out, if you would like to go for a biology and psychology combination, then your option should be PCB. Okay, but okay. Suppose if you are in commerce or you are in arts and still you would like to go for a liberal art, then you cannot okay. take biology, but you can say, for example, if you have a, if you have a commerce, 11, 12 commerce, then maybe you can still choose maybe psychology and performing arts together. Or business studies and uh, performing arts together, or a psychology together, or economics together, whatever. Whatever okay. combination okay. will be the institute. Yeah. Sure. Uh, one more, one more question I had. Yes. Um, so uh, in the earlier part of your presentation, you compared a little bit of science, technology, and arts. So is there mm -hmm. a, a comparison of vacancies available, salary packages? All those things also that you have that you can maybe maybe send to us or show us as to how the um, arts and all fare up with uh, science and technology and biology and all those things uh, in terms of vacancies available in terms of salary packages because that's what at the end of the road you know is the target right. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct, correct. So, 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 what I'm saying is that, uh, see, when we are looking at liberal arts, it's a very intense program. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I mean, you know, let's not go by the word called liberal arts. Okay. They are the people who work very extensively. They have a terrific research capacities. They are very critical thinking. They do a lot of internship. They do a lot of projects. They work with NGOs, you know. So they have a very intense environment. Okay. Uh, so uh, so last time when I was speaking to this symbiosis people, symbiosis School of Liberal Arts, uh, the, the, the uh, head of the department uh, mentioned that, you no, know, their kids work anywhere around 14 hours a day and she said it's not I'm, I'm not saying for the sake of saying it uh but this this is the fact 
okay because they they work okay. so what happens is that you know when they go for um, job uh, opportunities they get excellent pay packages okay so um, uh, so because then there is a need from i mean from industry side as well okay so uh, i think uh, they can they can get a very good uh, uh, i would say pay packages yeah but uh, as of now uh, most of these liberal schools are offering undergraduate program and most of these kids are are, are going uh, to pursue their masters uh, with international universities or jnus um, kind of universities okay uh, post their masters they are they are getting very good job opportunities i think but unfortunately i don't have a data on that at this point in time but what i was uh, uh, given to understand that they get excellent opportunities and most i mean many of okay. them from universities have also joined iim and london school of economics and uh, harvard so obviously you know looking at their uh, their, their career background i'm sure they will get uh, uh, better career opportunities okay okay thank you yeah so with respect to uh, liberal arts i had a question uh, with so mm -hmm. much data gathering online uh, we uh, definitely data science is an upcoming field so do we yeah. have in liberal arts data science plus psychology in order to understand the psyche of the customer so this combination is available yeah there is a possibility but uh, at this point in time according to my knowledge i think data science uh, is uh, is not available i will have to inquire uh, because uh, see i mean people are gearing for data science now okay uh, but uh, you have uh, statistics as an option with uh, with liberal arts you can also choose mathematics okay so if you have a combination of mathematics and statistics for your undergraduate program, you can certainly migrate to data science or a data analytics at least, okay, for your master's program. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so so basically uh, undergraduate in maths and then uh, can get into liberal arts also and uh, yeah, to yeah. understand the strategy? Yeah. Should we yes, yes, yes. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, uh, Vijay, this presentation would be uh, shared with us because uh, some yeah, slides no, contain really yeah, yeah, yeah. very yeah. useful information. I'm, I'm recording this, okay? So uh, I will make this link, I mean, recording available to you all a little later. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess uh, we, are, we are done. Sir, so, so one more question. So, yeah. what are the opportunities uh, in humanities and post graduation after engineering? Is there any possibility of joining uh, in masters in humanities uh, field? Uh, yes, you can. You can. You can join. You can join. And what yeah. would be the uh, possible degrees? Yeah, a lot of master programs are available. Uh, suppose uh, you can even join cognitive science. Okay, you can join. Uh, counseling psychology you can join industrial psychology you can even get into sports uh, psychology okay so basically a lot of psychology terms you are using so is humanities uh, related to the psychology only i mean yeah, i'm not aware yeah, yeah. psychology is a part of humanities yeah okay okay and so can we ask uh, other uh, like can i ask a question related to sports management over here or can it, it can be later so we have a, we have a separate uh, okay, uh, for, for management okay sir no issues no issues yeah. thank you thank you so much okay you're welcome so uh, thank you very much uh, it was indeed a was pleasure talking to you all so we'll uh, end the meeting now thank you very much Good night. Thank you so much, sir. Good night.